Roy Husky. Roy Husky. And where are you from? Where Valley. Where's Sevier Valley? Sevier County. Sevier County. Right. So you, uh, where did you go to school? In Rocky Flat. Rocky Flat. In Marwood. Okay. And then you went into the Army? Were you drafted? Yes, sir. And what, what was it like being drafted? Did you, did you get a notice in the mail or? Yeah, I had to report to uh, Sevier, to the draft board. And uh, they took a uh, bus load of us to Fort Oglethorpe. Okay. Rounded up a whole bus load and took us down there. Of course, we were examined and uh, come back home. I guess it was, uh, I couldn't tell you how long it was till they called me to report back to Fort Oglethorpe. And we all had to go back down there then. And uh, when they got a train load of us, they sent us to California on a troop train. And tell us about that experience. Did well, uh, had a blackout on the train all the way through. When we come into any town, anywhere, all the shades had to be pulled down. They didn't want us to know where we was going. And uh, we'd get in the desert somewhere, and that troop train would pull it off and get out and run us around. When we got it, it took us about... Uh, I don't know, two or three weeks to go to California, the way we traveled on that troop train. And we started a brand new division in Cal California, just out of Murrville, California. And uh, it was the 13th Army. And uh, they just built it. Uh, they had the sidewalks rock, but they wasn't paved. And it was raining when we got there about two or three o'clock in the morning. And uh, the train couldn't get to uh, anywhere close to barracks and they had to get us off from marshes in the rain and anywhere you stepped off the sidewalk you'd mark up in the mud to your knees. Wow. And I'd say it was two o'clock when we got to our barracks when they got us all in the barracks. We had to check out our beds when we got them checked out. They did, our rations hadn't come in. We hadn't had those. They gave us a cookie that night to eat. So, or morning rather. And they come in and blow the whistle, turn the lights on uh, before daylight. Uh, on, it was on Sunday morning. And uh, rations still hadn't come in. We didn't have, a, we had donuts for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and the rations got in, we had, we had lunch all right. But uh, I stayed there in uh, Camp Beale a little over a year. And uh, we built a brand new armor division there. And uh, I got called, we got called out from there and I transferred the whole outfit to Texas to Camp Bowie. And we stayed there almost a year. And, w and what year is this, are we talking? That was in 42, I guess. 1943. 43 when we was in Texas. Okay. And, uh, my wife stayed with me when I got situated I could. She came to California and stayed with me as long as I desire. And my first sergeant when he transferred to Texas, uh, he uh, he had a, a, little, a baby, oh, it was walking and talking. And uh, we'd been and played with it some, or she was growing that. She loved kids. And uh, he, he asked, him and his wife asked her, if she didn't want to ride to Texas with us, with them, and I, of course I had to go on the buses or tra we went on train to there, and uh, they beat me there, but she had a room, and when I got there, she stayed with me as long as I stayed in, in Texas, and when I shipped out from there, I went to, uh, I believe Camp Mead, Maryland. Okay. And. Uh, we shipped out from Ireland, went overseas, and went to England. So when you shipped out from Camp Mead, was it a, what kind of ship was it? Do you remember? Uh, we went across to England on uh, in a convoy. Okay. At that time, they were afraid of uh, uh, submarines and all. And we had, a, I guess, there's uh, 50, 60 ships carrying uh, supplies and everything else to England that they had got. 
Well, when we got to it, it was about, it took us, I guess, two or three weeks to go across the way we went mm -hmm. in the Congo. Were you already assigned to a unit? No, I wasn't no. assigned to no unit. I was in, in a depot is where okay. they put us over there, and uh, we was going to go in as replacements, which we did. And uh, they was, I don't know how many are out of my division, but we got, in that pool we got, got people from all uh, other divisions, everywhere else, and went in as replacements into Normandy where we went. And I know uh, the morning that they invaded over there, I was, was in a barracks, a tent rather, what was in down in England, and we'd stayed there, I guess, two or three weeks before they got ready for us, and they just shipped us out as they needed us over there. And I got over there, I believe it was seven days after D-Day. You, and you're, we're talking about Normandy? In Normandy, okay. we got to Normandy, seven days after D-Day. It was still pretty rough down there. And uh, I made it to St. Lowe. And uh, who were who were you assigned to? The I was assigned to the 83rd Division. Okay, 83rd Infantry Division. The First Army and 83rd Division. Okay. And uh, that that's where I was at when I got wounded. I got, I got to Normandy. We was trying to take the hill overlooking Normandy, and uh, <coughs> they come over and bummed it, draped it, everything else. Didn't look like it. Tore all the trees, everything else off of that hill, and. Uh, We'd get up and rifle would get up and start trying to take it, or they just just tore us up. And uh, got up, I got up to where there was a a road come through there, our hedgerows they called them, but the road was in there and it was down. And uh, they'd reported then that they wasn't no. Everything was this small arms far up there, and Lord, they they just beat us down every time we get started. After we'd have to withdraw, they'd come back over, call the Air Force in. They'd come back over, bum it, strafe it again. They wasn't a tree standing on that hill. Wow! And uh, finally, we got up to where there was a road come through there, and when we got up there, I'll tell you what, they had tanks. The 88s on them, and they just blew the top of the ground off where we was at in there. One hit, uh, evidently, I didn't know what happened, but it hit right under me. Or I'd say it did, in other words, it knocked me out. So that's when you were wounded in that's action? That's when I was wounded, overlooking St. Lowe. That's what we was trying to take. The First Army was supposed to meet the Third Army in St. Lowe. And I got knocked out for the third army. Got to, I had a brother that was in the third. Hmm. He's tank. He's in a tank battalion in the third army. See, the third army was a mechanized unit. In mm -hmm. other words, they had all the trucks, tanks, and everything. And we, my outfit was just a M1, uh, 50, 50 caliber. It was about the biggest gun we had. Hmm. So when you got knocked out, did you come to right away, or were you out for a while? I, I, I didn't know where it was at. Mm -hmm. I, I got back to England, don't know how I got back there. And what kind of injuries did you have? Well, I, I stayed there in the hospital in England uh, right close six months. Oh, wow. Before they got me on a troop train and sent me back to the States, or they were a troop ship. A hospital ship, what I'm trying to say. <coughs> and of course, they wasn't in no hurry about getting back. And we was out there on a hospital ship, I guess, two or three weeks coming back. And when I got back to there, there's about, I have no idea how many there was, but they put us on a plane and flew us to Kennedy General Hospital in Memphis. Okay. And I stayed there, uh, I guess, three months. Three or four months, I hope to have long. And I got a three week furlough. Come home, and 
of course, didn't get to stay but a few days. They're supposed to report back to Florida. To uh, I don't even know where it was in Florida now, but anyway, uh, I stayed there. I guess a month or a month and a half, and uh, that was the part of Florida that I, or the part of the army that I liked. We had a, our pass to town, old meal ticket. We'd go to mess hall any time we wanted to go. They had recreation first, go deep sea fishing or any recreation you wanted. We had private rooms and hotel, maids to make her beds. Wow. I had it made that month, <laughs> <laughs> but. They sent me back to Fort uh, Oglethorpe and discharged me. Okay. When when you were first wounded, did did they send a notification to your parents back home or? Yeah, they sent one to my wife. Oh, your wife. That's right. And they they sent her. Uh, uh, Was it a Western Union? Western telegram? Union. Uh, that's, that's all it had. Didn't mm -hmm. it? Didn't have all this um, this stuff you get through right now. They'd send her a report. About how often was it, Don, that they'd send her a report? I'm not sure. I'll hear, I'll hear the tale and all. But anyway, when I got back to uh, Kennedy General in Memphis, she wanted to come down there, and the government advised her to not come. So she's working too. She, as uh, quick as she could, well, before she got home, she rode a bus in at, uh, at or out of Knoxville to Alcoa. My sister lived in Alcoa and she stopped there. And my brother-in-law, when he came in from work that afternoon, uh, he, uh, talking to her, asked her if she wanted to go to work at Alcoa. And she said, I'm, I'll do anything. I, I can't sit at the house. So uh, he told her, said, go to the office, take care of her, and they'll hire you. So he took her over there. And uh, I don't know what time it was when they got there, but anyway, when they got over there, they took her in and uh, interviewed her and asked her if she'd go to work that evening on two ten. So she she went to work the same day she went over, same day she went to the office over there. She started to work that afternoon, and she worked seven days a week till I come home. Wow keep her mind off him. Yeah. Did they present you with a Purple Heart in the hospital? Yeah, in England. In England? Okay. Yeah. That's uh, the only medal I got. And after after I come home, I guess it was 20 years, wasn't it, Donald? Yeah, or longer. Or longer. They got into it. Donald and Rowena got into it over here at the courthouse with uh, the county court clerk over the Purple Heart. They, uh, I had the, my name engraved in the back of it, and I don't even remember. I would. I told them I wasn't gonna fool with it. I wouldn't. Come, I wouldn't even come over with them. I said they sent me home with an eighty percent disability. And when I went to work at Alcoa, I had to report it. And when I reported that, they uh, called me to Murfreesboro to be examined. Well, I had no car, couldn't get a car back then. Couldn't get cars, gas, or nothing else, so I had to ride the bus. Take me a day to go down there, a day to be examined, a day to come back home. I'd lose three days at Alcoa every time I'd go. And about Three or four weeks after I'd get back, I'd get a notice in the mail that they cut me 10 percent. And they cut me that away, so they got it down to 20 percent. I said, the next letter I get like that, I'll tear it up and throw it away. Well, about six months I got another I just tore it up and threw it away. Didn't go, didn't report, nothing. And they just, just Took the other twenty percent, so I of your VA disability. VA disability. Mm -hmm. They took that. I didn't get anything till you got it for me when we tried again. Here. Donald got me up here, or you come out there and yeah, interview me. Made a home visit with you. Yeah. How long? Now, what did you do for? As a you worked for Alcoa, right? Yeah. How long did you work for Alcoa? Thirty-seven and a half year. Well, good. 
then you retired and yeah, I retired uh, on disability in uh, seventy three. Okay. Now you're ninety six years old. Be ninety seven my birthday. Yep. Not from next May. And uh, World War Two veteran. Yeah. How how does that feel today and in, in today's generation, knowing? You well, after they got into it with the, about the Purple Heart here, they tags. Purple Heart tags. Yeah, the Purple Heart tags. The is Purple what Heart tags. Uh, county court clerk here at that time. I don't know who he was, but he said, "Well, they told them I'm taking a boat that Purple Heart." The flea market. The flea market. Mm. And I said, "That's the reason." But I didn't, wouldn't fool with it. I know how they was over here, and I didn't want nothing to do with them. Mm -hmm. That's the way it went off. But anyway, uh, Donald worked with a. What was he in Sevierville? He's over the VFW. Uh, he had something to do with the, the uh, VA up there. Okay. And him and everybody else, well, they had a fit over that. They got my purple heart tags and I don't know how long it was after that then until the county here decided they'd quit selling us tags and give us a permanent tag. Mm -hmm. So we just put a permanent on my purple heart license plate. Yep. Well uh, you, you've earned that plate. Well I, I thought I did yeah. but it took them 40 years to know it. Well. After I got it was out about 40 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, they told me, well, I got a letter from the government to tell me that uh, my records had burnt in St. Louis mm -hmm. and they didn't have no record of me. Well, I, about so many months after that then, I got another letter telling me that they'd found my records and found where I knew a lot of medals and wanted to know if I was issued any. I said nothing but the Purple Heart. And they said they'd found the rest of what I've got over there they'd ship them to me. And that was 40 years after I was in service. Wow. It took them 40 years to know that I'd been there. Well, we, we know you were there and, and really did a great part of the war effort. I mean, you were at Normandy seven days after, after the D -Day. invasion. Yeah. And uh, like you said, it was still not, not an easy task to, to land there. and. And fight. Well, I didn't find anything easy about it over there. Mm -hmm. One of my brothers, he was one of the first ones that left out of Wire Valley. Okay. And uh, he was old enough to where at one time, before just before they jumped on the Pearl, or Pearl Harbor, bum, or bum, uh, he was back home. <coughs> and uh, they had discharged him. Because he was over a certain age, everybody over a certain age, they discharged him at one time, and he was in that group, so he come back. But he didn't get stable about, uh, I don't know, six, eight, ten months when they bummed Pearl Harbor. He'd already had his training. They pulled him up, sent him right on overseas right quick. So he went through all of it. Wow. He was uh, in North Africa and all them places through there, Italy. And Sicily and all that, from on into, he was in Patton's Third Army, and they landed in southern France. Hmm. And we, we, the Third Army was supposed to meet them in St. Lo. My brother was in that outfit, but I got knocked out for it. Do you have any, did you make any good friends when you were in the service? Well, I, I had some in uh, the 13th Armor in California and on into Texas, but when we went into a, a depot that they drove from, and I don't know where any of them went. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any, I wasn't in there long enough to make any friends mm -hmm. in, uh, in England, so we just were out to maybe 30, 50, something like that, or what, whatever they needed over there, we were sent over. Hmm. When you were in the hospital, 
was it full of wounded soldiers just like yourself? Yeah, he was wounded soldiers so what was mm -hmm. there in England. In England? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, were the doctors and nurses, I mean, did they treat you good? And, yeah. And, uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, my teeth started beeling on me at the roots. It's all sound. And they pulled, uh, they x-rayed them, and all my upper teeth, the front ones, had abscesses on the roof. So I had to have all four of my front upper teeth pulled up, done that in England, and made me a partial over there. Hmm. And after I, after I come home, they, my teeth just kept a beeling. Man never had a tooth to beetle at the roots, I'll tell you what, they hurt. And it wasn't long after I come home till I had them all had to have them all pulled. Hmm. Wow. So I had parcels made uh, shortly after I come home. Well, Roy, we are so proud of you and and uh, grateful for you and glad to know you. Well, I I've had a good life. I was married and she stayed with me in the army. And she worked while I was gone. And when I come back, I got went to work at Alcoa. And uh, they laid it. She was in a transportation on the mm -hmm. industrial truck. That's what they put her on. And uh, they laid all them off. Alcoa laid all them off. That was too hard for the women. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of women truckers at that mm -hmm. time. And they laid all them off. And they called her back. And she. Didn't, I told her she didn't need to go back there. I could make a living. I was working. So uh, she's, a, she's a homemaker the rest of the time. Okay, good. And uh, we had, he's the only boy, we've got, only kid we've got, Donald here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've made it pretty good all these years. And me and her lived together 70, 73 years. Passed away about two, two and a half years ago. Okay. Yeah, we're so sorry. And that's the biggest loss I've ever had. I yeah. don't have a whole lot to live for now. Well, after I lost her. I understand. I, about I, all of us, Donald, mm -hmm. his wife. Well, I understand, but we are happy that you're still with us, and <coughs> um, we, you know, we hope you have. Many days ahead of you know still and well, Donald and his wife just they just go overboard tried to help take care of her as long as I could at home. He said, "Well, anytime you need help, you holler." And I told him one one Saturday morning, I guess it was nine or ten o'clock, that I'd done all I could do. I said, "I've been up with her for two or three nights." Just about all night up and down, and he's going to have to do something. Within two hours, he called his stepson. That he come and helped him. They set the hospital bed up in the living room of mm -hmm. the house, and he just moved in. Sure. And he slept right. His head was in three foot of her. She lived exactly four weeks from the time we put her in the hospital bed. She lived four weeks exactly. Wow. And he spent every night, if she ever got up or ever moved, he... He was there with her. He was there with her. And uh, Kathy was working. She uh, didn't work just a whole lot after that. She, she'd come every morning when she's starting to work. We'd change her bed and everything before she went to work. Mm -hmm. And she got off, got out sick. Had a stroke. Had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And they, she was a manager at the service station. She was working at Al Alco Highway at Tire Port. And uh, McNutt's fired her on Christmas Day because she couldn't go back to work. No. Oh. That's the best thing ever happened to her. Hmm. 
Well, Roy, thank you so much for doing this interview. Well, I, I appreciate the VA now. I had never had a commander here until we got you. But, uh, well, we just, I just want to help help our veterans and make well, them. Well, uh, yeah, I feel like you do a good job. Thank you. I don't want anybody to do any, any better or any, take any more interest in, than you have in my situation. Uh, I, I know what your history is with, with the military and, and the VA, and I just want to make sure you're, you know that we appreciate you. I, yeah, I know, but back, uh, back when I was discharged, they, they didn't appreciate much back then. Yeah, and, and, and I can't take that back, you know, I, but I'm oh, going, I, I realize that. going forward, I want to, I, I appreciate and you. I'm up to, you're the first that we've had here that seemed like he took any interest in the veterans. He's just on the job. Well, thank you. That's what I, the way I feel about it. Thank you. Thank you again, Roy. You're quite welcome.